Without faith in Jesus Christ, we're just like the world. But when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart, we step out of the realm of reasoning and we step into the realm of faith. Because before I have faith in Jesus, I really only have natural faith. And I only go so far because I'm basing everything on my five senses. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for today, Lord. We thank you that we are in the presence of the most awesome deity in the earth. Thank you for your presence in our lives, Lord. Thank you for your word, your love, your grace, your mercy. And Father, we just, uh, we just rest today. You said there was a group of people that they didn't mix their faith with the word. And you said, therefore, it did not profit them. So I'm gonna declare up front that because of our faith in your word, we're gonna be profited today. So if we praise you, we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Is anybody watching the Olympics? 19 days of Olympics. Let me just give you some statistics. This is the 31st Olympiad. 200 countries are represented. 2,300 athletes. 47 events. The longest race is 31 miles and that's called a uh, walk race. And it's where you walk race for 31 miles. The shortest race is the 100 meter or the dash or the, or the swimming. But it's been going on for 19 days, it will continue. We know that you get gold, you get silver, or you get bronze. Uh, they say 10 million people will be in Rio de Janeiro for that. Billions of dollars are spent. This was awarded to them eight years ago. And uh, you're wondering why in the world would they give it to a country uh, in Rio de Janeiro with the, the poverty, the economy, and now Zika showed up. and. Uh, but anyway, they, uh, it, it's really exciting to go on. And, and, and watching all of that, uh, some of these athletes are just unbelievable. My goodness, well, our, our American Michael Phelps, uh, he's won more gold medals than anyone has ever accumulated. He, he wins more gold medals than countries win. Is he 25? 23 gold medals, and that's not counting the other, 28 total medals. Wow, wow. There's something about an Olympian. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Open your Bibles, if you would, to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, For without faith it is impossible... Everybody say impossible. <laughs> it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe, number one, that He is God and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek His face. I want to talk this morning about being diligent. Rewards come based upon people's diligence. All of these athletes that are winning the gold in whatever they're doing, and I'm telling you, I didn't know some of this stuff was in the Olympics, but I happened to watch trampolining. Has anybody ever watched trampolining? Okay. Who's all seen trampolining in the Olympics? Raise your hand tall. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
is phenom- isn't, it, isn't it cool? 55 feet. They're bouncing on this trampoline. And, and not only are they bouncing, but they're doing 52 flips. It, it's, I never had watched it before, but it's beautiful. But they go back and they talk about the training and the diligence. And, and the, the young girl from, uh, is it uh, Spring that's winning all the uh, acrobatics? Yeah. What's her name? Simone. Simone. Oh, my goodness gracious. She is phenomenal. Well, and they've got all these little girls. Now they want to be just like her. You know, they can hope and they can wish and they can train. But until they add diligence. Because the Bible says we must be diligent to receive the reward of our faith. And so I'm at the level I am in my life based on my diligence to the things of God. Rewards are based on diligence. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we, we, we have to have faith. Okay, let's back up. Where did we get this faith? Well, Jesus in John chapter 3, when Nicodemus came to him, Nicodemus, a man not in faith, a great, you know, he's a Pharisee, a leader of the, the group. And he came to Jesus at night and he said, there's something that's not normal about you. There's something different about you. And Jesus made this statement. He said, Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. You've got to be born again that you might enter into the things of God. You've got to be born again that you might see the things of God. See, without faith in Jesus Christ, we're just like the world. But when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart, we step out of the realm of reasoning and we step into the realm of faith. Because before I have faith in Jesus, I really only have natural faith. And I only go so far because I'm basing everything on my five senses. If I can see it, hear it, smell it, feel it, touch it. Amen? That's, that's, that's where my faith level is. If I, can, if I can fit into one of those, then I'm in this world. But Jesus said, we, we step out of the, the sense realm and we step into the faith realm and we believe that we, those things that we cannot see will come to pass. For faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So because I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I'm now a faith person. And I can believe the unexpected. I can believe the unbelievable. Okay, let me back up. Without Jesus, you're told that you have cancer. You are going to deal with that according to yourself. You're going to reason it. Uncle Albert died from it. Aunt Susie died from it. Almost everybody dies from it. So therefore my thinking, my faith, my reasoning limits me to whatever is going on. But because I've stepped into the faith realm, nothing is impossible. (laughs) And because I'm in the faith realm, the Bible tells me I can speak to a mountain. And I could command that mountain to be picked up, thrown away and cast into the sea and doubt not in my heart. But believe that whatsoever things I saith shall come to pass. See, are you understand? I'm in my faith. I'm in my faith walk now. But I can't make that statement without faith. Because I have no faith. I have faith only in what I can see, feel, touch, and smell. I, my reasoning is wrapped around all the reasons why, why it's happening to me and why I can't believe for it. But when I step into the faith realm, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
I go to a, a meeting like this and I hear someone stand up and say, Pastor, they, they diagnosed me with cancer two months ago. I went back for a checkup and they think they got the wrong x-rays because they say I don't have any cancer. Are you see what I'm saying? For without faith, it's impossible to please God. So God, and he said, I came, I love the whole world. I came for the whole world. And I want to get people to step out of the, of the reasoning state into the faith state. To where they know who they are in Christ Jesus. And we can say I'm the head and not the tail above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. Let me back up. Dealing with my finances without Jesus is no buena per nada. That's Hebrew for. Are <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You ever tried to deal with your finances without God? Without faith? If your money doesn't have some faith wrapped around it, you're going to have none left over at the end of the month. But then all of a sudden, I got saved. I stepped into the faith. And it says, given, it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, running over. Will men give into your bosom? Wow. I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you. You don't have enough buckets to keep it all in. Wow. And then all the other scriptures that go by faith. Are you understanding this? By faith. But it says... Those that diligently, faith is not just faith, it's got to be diligent. Amen? See, grace, this new sloppy grace that's going around says, well, God's already done it all, so therefore you don't need to do nothing, honey. God's already done it all. You don't need to ask for forgiveness. He's already forgiven you. You don't have to bear fruit. He's, the, he's your fruit, your first fruits. You don't have to do that. You just, just, just live in his grace. I love God's grace, but grace does not give us the privilege or the opportunity to deny that God says there's a diligency to our walk in the things of God, to be diligent. Diligent means constant, steady, painstaking, concentrated, zealous, unfaltering, untiring. Hallelujah. So I'm just thinking, I said, okay, Lord, let's look at some people that were diligent in the Bible. Let's just take some diligent people. Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God, but was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was well able to perform. Staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was steadfast Amen. in what God had told him. Diligent, steadfast, unmovable, unstoppable. In other words, nothing is going to stop me. How about the woman with the issue of blood? Little lady probably weighed 80 pounds. 12 years of uh, infirmity in her body where she's losing blood, losing blood gone to every physician, spent all of her money, lost her family, is now considered an outcast. She can't be out because of her blood condition. If she's within 50 yards of anyone, she has to holler out, unclean, unclean. But something happened to her that she heard about Jesus and she stepped out of the state of reasoning and she stepped into faith. And her faith statement was, if I might just touch the hem of his garment, I shall, not maybe, not hopefully, not someday, I shall be made whole. Now, did she hear about Jesus? Did someone tell her about Jesus? But she had to totally remove herself from reasoning. See, reasoning wants to bring up the facts of life. 
This has been going on for 12 years. That's a pretty big reason not to have faith. You are unclean. You have no money, honey. The doctors won't even return your phone calls anymore. They've given up on you. See, that's reasoning. We, we can't move into the realm of the, of the impossible in our own reasoning. I, I, we can only go so far. But because of Jesus and because of faith, because I received Jesus as my Lord, something happened to this girl, this woman to say, if I might just touch the hem of his garment, this other stuff doesn't matter. Whoa. And it said she pressed through the throng. Because you know, there were hundreds of people thronging Jesus, touching him, elbowing him, wanting something from him. And somehow she made her way between all of those disciples and she probably was crawling and she got and she touched the hem of his garment. Now see, we're talking about faith, diligent faith. And she touched the hem of his garment and the Bible says immediately. How fast is immediate? I, I like to say that's right now. Immediately, she became whole. But this, this, is, this is what's neat. See, faith, diligent faith. And it said, Jesus stopped. And Jesus said, someone just touched me. And most likely Peter said, Jesus, you got to be joking. Everybody's touching you. And Jesus said, no, Peter. Someone touched me. And I felt virtue leave my body. Wow. Another translation says, someone has made a demand upon my ability. That's not just some little old lady thing. Well, I think I'll turn on the TV and maybe some preacher will say something and maybe I'll hear something. No, she threw all reasoning away because of her faith. And she made a faith statement that said, if I touch it, I'm whole. Diligence. Amen? Are you understanding that? Diligence. 120 disciples on the day of Pentecost. After Jesus, the 40 days after Jesus ascended, he spoke to 500 people, the Bible tells us, about waiting for the promise of the Father. And we know that for the last 10 days, there were only 120 in the upper room. They got the reward. Are you, are you understanding this? We, you know, there was some article, and you know, this always comes about, that someone said it wasn't right for them just to give certain people gold and bronze and silver, that, that these people worked hard, they all, all get a medal. You don't want to make someone feel bad just because they came in last. I came in last one time in a race. I did. They, we went to a track meet, and uh, I was not good at track. Uh, but if you could move and breathe, then you were put on the track team. And they needed someone to run the mile. I had never run the mile. But they said, we need someone to run the mile. And I said, okay, I'll run the mile. And there were two heats, 25 in the, in the faster ones and then 25 in us ones. And so I, they put me in the last, the last heat to run the mile. And uh, we're almost, uh, we probably got a fourth uh, to go. And there's me and one guy, and he's number 49 and I'm number 50. And, and uh, we were just kind of talking to one another. And then pretty soon he said, I'm not going to be last. And uh, he wasn't. I, 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 came in, I came in last. Now, wouldn't that have been dumb for me to think that I should have got a medal? There were 120 on that day that the, the church was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Diligence. I could name names in this church of people that, that I would put, they are a diligent person. 
because I've known them for a long time, and I would say they are diligent. They are steadfast, unmovable. They're concentrated, painstaking. Amen? That's what God's looking for in the world. Amen? Are you understanding this? Amen. 3 John 1 and 2 makes this statement. Brother, and I wish above all things that you might prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. God wants us to be prosperous and to be in health. Amen. It doesn't just come easily, does it? There's a diligence to acting on your faith. I like what Genesis 1.28 said in the very beginning. God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. None of those come about if we're not diligent. Amen? Is everybody understanding that? There's, there's something about us, and, and it's, it's our faith. You know, we're not working. Uh, I'm not doing it as a work to increase my faith, but I'm doing it as a show of my faith. That, Lord, I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to be diligent, painstaking. I'm going to be consistent. Because, see, 2 Timothy 3, when Paul is telling us about the end times, how many believe we're living in the end times? I don't know how much worse the world can get. But, but Paul, in writing to, to Timothy, and, and he's saying, Timothy, this is what's going to, this is what's going to happen in the last days. Bubba, it's going to get bad. Men are going to become lovers of themselves. They're going to be boastful and proud and, and unnatural. And, and they're going to be just all, list all the things that mankind is going to become, which we're seeing. But then in verse 14, he said, but Timothy, continue in that which you have learned and that which you are assured of. Another way Paul could have said that is, Timothy, be diligent about that which you've heard and that which you've learned and that which you walk in. So there's a new word for our vocabulary and it is, Lord, I want to be diligent. I want to be faithful to the things of God. But it comes, we have it, it can be activated in our life when we step into the realm of faith. And that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you've got to be born again that you can see the things of the kingdom, understand the things of the kingdom, but that you might enter into the things of the kingdom. And faith is a gift that's been given to each and every one of us. The Bible says the measure of faith. Amen? Amen. But we grow and abound in faith and love. How many know that? Amen. Paul's writing a letter and he said, I hear that your, your faith grows and your love abounds to all the saints. So when we are diligent to the things of God, to prayer, to reading the word, to coming to church, to being a witness, to testifying, our faith grows. I would hope that I'm stronger today than I was a year ago. I, I would pray that if I could go before God and say, God, am I, am I stronger today than I was a year ago? Am I, more, am I more faithful today than I was a year ago? Am I more diligent today? than I was a year ago. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't the word good? Yes. Be diligent. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible. God is pleased by faith. When he sees a child or an elderly person use their faith, it pleases God. Because we diligently seek his face. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Thank you, Lord. Father, I praise you and I thank you for your word today. Father, the, we can't go any further in Lars until we know that everyone has, has stepped into that kingdom of God. Nicodemus, you must be born again that you might enter in. If you're here this morning and you could honestly say, Pastor, I don't know that I've ever entered in. I've thought about it. But I don't know if I've ever done it. How do I do it? It's this simple. 
You confess with your mouth that you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he accepts you and you now enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Anybody raise their hand this morning and say, Pastor, I believe that's me. Would you just raise your hand if that's you? I want to pray with you this morning. We just pray with you this morning that you, if you don't know Jesus, today is your day. I'm going to tell you, your life will be turned upside down and it's better than it's ever been before. Amen. So everybody here today, wow, we've stepped in. Everybody say, I've stepped in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Stand to your feet with me. Say this is sin. And when we sin, this is what we do with sin. We, 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 we cover it up. And this is sin. But the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So even though I have sinned and I've covered it up, unless I repent and realize that Jesus has forgiven me because of his blood, then this is removed and I now have fellowship with God. You understanding that? But if I don't, if I have a sin and I say, it's really not sin. <laughs> I'm, my sin is covered and God, out of his great love and mercy, he can do nothing with me because I've covered my sin and said it's not sin.